Thanks, Eric. Um, yeah, as Eric mentioned, uh, we've been in the Dominican Republic now since 2012, but in uh, the last two weeks, we've taken a little bit of a, a shift of focus with a new asset, and that'll be the, the focal point of the presentation here uh, today. Forward-looking statement, uh, there's a point in my presentation here where uh, this will become critical, so be aware I will be making some forward-looking statements here. Um, newly acquired district-scale land position in a very active mining camp of the Dominican Republic. Um, I'll speak to why we, we, are, we are there and, and some of the other activity that's going on in this region. Quick snapshot of the company's structure, 75 million shares out, 78 fully diluted. Uh, note there are no warrants currently outstanding on the company. Uh, we've got about a $6 million market cap and uh, in and around a million dollars in the treasury. A million dollars is, is discretionary. We don't have any underlying option payments, work commitments, so we can spend that money as we see fit. The team, uh, we've got a very good, in, in my opinion, uh, technical team uh, with a, a slant towards uh, geological backgrounds. Adrian Fleming is our chairman. Adrian was part of the team that discovered the white gold deposit uh, for Underworld and was bought out by Kinross. Very recently, he was a director of Northern Empire that was bought by Coor. Quinton Henning, some of you may know, PhD geologist, uh, very well known for his work in the last several, say call it 12 to, to 24 months with Novo Resources and the success they've had in Australia recently, moving that up to about a billion dollar market cap uh, this time last year. And Alistair Waddell, is, as Eric pointed out, uh, also a geologist. Uh, Alistair was a founder and former CEO of Gold Quest Mining, who have been focused in the DR now for uh, 10, 12 years. Um, he spent a lot of time looking around in the Dominican Republic at a lot of different projects and a lot of different assets and uh, was a big proponent of the asset that we've recently acquired and, and, and really coveted uh, going after this asset. Lon Shaver is also on our board of directors. He's the newest addition. He's currently with Silvercorp as a vice president and spent about 10 years as an investment banker at Raymond James here in Vancouver. For those of you who sort of know a little bit of the history of the company, you'll know that we've been focused in the western region of the country for several years. And although that's a very prospective emerging belt where several million ounces have been delineated, there really isn't any existing mining operations in that part of the country. And part of the issue that uh, GoldQuest has run into in recent uh, months and years is getting a permit for Romero. And so uh, anytime you're trying to push a new project into a region that doesn't have history uh, for that kind of, uh, uh, of um, industry, you're going to have opposition, whether you're in the western part of the Dominican Republic or the western part of Canada trying to push a pipeline through. So these kinds of things take time. In the meantime, we've looked at, as a junior exploration company, where can we go and focus our efforts and spend our money? The central part of the country here has much more uh, mining history. There's much more current mining activity. There are several mines in the area that are currently uh, in operation, several of which have recently expanded. And most notably, um, the largest gold mining operation in Latin America, the fourth largest on the planet, Barracks Pueblo Viejo is located in this part of the country, and we've picked up an asset that's immediately adjacent to that project. A little bit of background on Pueblo Viejo and, and uh, the size and scale of this operation that we're now nestled up against. As I said, it's the fourth largest mining operation in the world, according to the 2017 numbers. There's, it started out with over 20 million ounces of gold. They've currently got 13 million ounces of gold, 74 million ounces of silver, and close to 300 million pounds of copper. This thing produces a million ounces a year at an all-in sustaining cost of just $525 an ounce. And there was a $4.3 billion infrastructure build to get this operation up and running. So this is, a, this is a monster. This is one of the single largest economic drivers in the country, feeds the economy, and it's uh, an indication of just how important mining is in this part of the Dominican Republic, and permitting and operating is, is not a problem. This is... Uh, uh, a, a Google Earth image uh, of the Pueblo Viejo mine. You can, it's hard to tell scale here, but this is probably 10 kilometers from top to bottom. And the next slide here will show you the land that we've picked up surrounding that. So you can see we're sitting right up against their concession boundary on uh, three sides of the Pueblo Viejo operation. We've got about 10,000 hectares of land here, some of which has been worked in the past, but a lot of it is, is quite underexplored. And I'll talk in a little bit about some of the main targets that we plan to pursue here. In terms of the deal, as Eric touched on, we're very happy with the deal that we've uh, structured. We are still working toward closing this, 
but we have signed a definitive agreement and announced it. Um, this is a deal that allows us to keep money in our treasury and put money into the ground rather than into the hands of the seller. Uh, it's $25,000 cash, which really was done to cover their legal fees, and 7 million shares of precipitate that will be escrowed and released over a three-year period. And as you can see here, the majority of that stock isn't free trading until close to three years or at the three-year mark. So this gives us lots of room to put our money into the ground and be protected against uh, wholesale selling in the market from, uh, from the, uh, the recipient to this stock. More than an area play, again, it's nice to be sitting up against and in the shadow of a major mining operation, but what's the geological potential and what's gone on here? This has been worked by prior operators in the past, and there's been uh, some pretty impressive uh, prior trench and drill, drill numbers that have been reported. Uh, some of them I've cherry-picked here from a couple of zones in the north and in the south of the project. Uh, you know, you're looking at 23 meters of uh, over 4 grams gold, 23 grams per ton silver, 10 meters of nearly 3 grams gold, and 100 grams per ton silver with some copper and lead in there, uh, sorry, zinc as well. Um, all of these intercepts that are shown in this table are near surface. They're all uh, mineralized starting at uh, 20 meters depth or less. So this is near surface, open pitable. And the grades that you're looking at there, on the gold side anyway, are very much in line with what's being mined at Pueblo Viejo, which is mining at about a 2.5 gram grade. Some trench numbers as well in the southern part and, and the northern part of the project, again, that shows that there's some mineralization, there's some smoke here, but really hasn't been followed up adequately. Aside from those two, two areas where much of the, the prior work has been done, we're more, more interested in this lithocap alteration over on the west side of the Pueblo Viejo pits. And this is an area that I'll show in a minute has a sub significant uh, geophysical um, signature that we're quite interested in, but really has been overlooked by prior operators. So this is a look at uh, a magnetic geophysical survey done over the entire property package here. We're unable to show the data that's derived from the Pueblo Viejo pits, but you can see here that light pink represents a uh, magnetic high. And most of the work that was done in those other two areas was done in more magnetic low areas, uh, where there was some impressive geochem, I think they were looking for VMS style mineralization, something like that, but really had overlooked this magnetic uh, anomaly just, just on the other side of the concession boundary from Pueblo Viejo. Looking at that a little bit further, you can see here on, on the uh, aster image, which is that sort of brown and green image there, this is a satellite image, an aster image, where we're, we're sort of pulling out here this area of alteration, uh, heavily altered um, lithocap. And that green that's sort of pulled out there indicates silica and clay, and that's typically indicative of these lithocap alteration zones. And it coincides very nicely with that light pink uh, magnetic um, signature that you're seeing on the magnetic geophysical map. So those two things coinciding in an area where really there's been very little prior work and virtually no prior drilling to test that target. This is where I rely on my forward-looking statement slide that I talked about at the very beginning of the presentation. So we're going to take a little bit of a liberty here with a, a, a hypothetical, a schematic. And what you're looking at here is the dashed line at the top is sort of the uh, magnetic reading or the magnetic intensity. And you can see it goes up here over top of the Pueblo Viejo pits. Um, as we look at what the magnetic signature looks like on our ground, you push out across the concession boundary. You see again that what was that light pink blob is that elevated dashed line there, which is the heightened magnetic signature. So our thinking is, you know, is there the possibility to go in and look underneath that uh, lithocap alteration, that magnetic high, to see whether or not um, along the lines of what we see at Pueblo Viejo, there's a similar mineralized system underneath that magnetic signature. So that will be a primary focus for us as we move forward here with our uh, next phases of work. We'll be looking at data evaluation, geochemical work that was done by prior operators to try to see if we can see some geochemical, geochemical signatures that coincide with that. Uh, what's also important to us is that's not the only magnetic high within the package. There are a number of other areas that will also see similar work, but clearly uh, to the west of the pits there is the most obvious and sizable target at about three and a half kilometers in diameter. So in summary, we've got a district scale land package that we just acquired two weeks ago. Um, it's strategically located in what we believe to be a highly prospective area. There are multiple known mineralized zones through prior work that's been done, and certainly many of those require follow-up. Um, but most interesting to us, there's a very compelling magnetic high target that we're uh, keen to go after. 
So the next phases of work, we're going to close this transaction in the coming weeks. Uh, we'll complete the data compilation. There was a lot of information that's been received from the company that we've bought this from. We'll initiate our first phases of work later this year. We'll get boots on the ground. And the hope is that we can have that target and this project drill ready by the end of the first quarter of next year. Uh, I'll be out at the booth outside, happy to answer any specific questions. Thank you. Thank you.